Karen Hammond here, the Empowering Story Whisperer. For those of you catching us live and those of you catching us on the replay, welcome. So glad you took the time to tune in. This week is about how to let go with grace. And the irony of this topic for the week is, you know, I've just been in bed for the last three and a half days. And I should say this episode brought to you um, thanks to, holy cow, talk about brain, Woo-hoo. Um, a cold medication that comes in a little packet and you add hot water, Theraflu, that's it. <laughs> so, ha, huh, letting go with a, letting go with grace. Talk about letting go of the fact that, <clears throat> you know, I'm not feeling a hundred percent, but made a commitment to continue to do these episodes and to keep the commitment even though once in a while there's technical issues. But the thing that you may find most intriguing about learning to let go and especially from a place of grace is that it all begins when you can recognize that you aren't letting go gracefully. And so what does that mean, not letting go gracefully? Well, in children, clearly, uh, whew, little nose itch here, uh, clearly with children, you can see that show up as a temper tantrum. And hi there, I, I hope that you can hear me okay, because my voice is a little uh, nasally today, so just uh, give me a little thumbs up or a smile if you can hear me. I want to make sure you can hear me okay. Uh, So today's topic, letting go with grace. So the first thing is recognizing when you aren't letting go gracefully. And, you know, we need to look no further than a child having a temper tantrum in a grocery store to see that when they don't get something that they want, they're not, most of the time, they don't let go very gracefully. They start screaming and kicking and yelling, and sometimes they're splayed out on the floor. And not to say that as adults, we have that same kind of reaction, although some of you may have seen people or have family members that tend to have episodes like that. But letting go is one of the most important things that you can do for not only your mental and emotional and spiritual well-being, but also for the physical well-being. And one, of, one of the first places to begin is to understand from a place of compassion that you have something you're holding on to because you may have been hurt. Call it anger you know, or resentment. But everyone wants to be in a state of grace or occupy a space of uh, being happy and being joyful and being grateful. Excuse me, I need a drink of water. And there are all kinds of things that can so easily get in the way and interrupt that. It happens all the time, all the time. But if, if you can understand that most people walking the earth today have a history of things being taken from them. It may start, you know, in childhood when there are toys that get taken from a by a brother or a sister. Or when you get a little bit older and someone takes your innocence. Or someone as a teenager, you may believe that, you know, your parents took your freedom. And then you move into the rite of passage through adulthood. And then you get to work for someone who seems to take the joy <clears throat> from you. Because maybe you're not working for someone that you, really, in, that you really like. So there are so many ways in one's personal history where it's very easy to see a pattern of things that have been taken. But there is one thing that no one will ever be able to take from you. Never, under any circumstance. They may be able to take tangible things uh, from you. It's very easy to lose things, misplace things, or 
outright um, have something taken from you. Hey there, thanks for joining. You know, the topic is about um, today is about letting go, you know, with grace. And right now we're going into the piece of compassion and realizing that as human beings, we have a history of things being taken from us from a very early age. Toys to freedom uh, to uh, joy. So many different things have been taken from us. But the one thing that no one under any circumstance will ever be able to take from you is your reactions to whatever happens to you. Notice the word reaction versus action. Reaction is something that it's visceral. It, there's no, a lot of times there's no thought put in it whatsoever. So it's <clears throat> how you react when something happens. And typically something that comes as a surprise and not always a good surprise. So when it comes to letting go with grace, one of the things to recognize would be the things that have been taken from you over the course of time and how <clears throat> that's in the past and that doesn't need to, oh, well, hello there from across the pond. <laughs> hey, so glad you could join us. Um, it's, it's always a great idea to be able to take a look back and see all the things that have been taken from you so that you can, in hindsight, observe the reaction to how you behaved when things were taken from you. And particularly if it's love, if someone just rips, you know, rips a heart out, that's really painful. So if you can observe what has been lost or taken, then you'll be able to detect a pattern in what happens and what your reaction is when you do get surprised. Now, it's so important to feel compassion because that's really, that's really where the whole process starts. And when people cannot take your reaction, there are emotions that go behind that. And those are emotions that people will never be able to take from you unless you surrender them. <clears throat> your emotions are not something that people can steal. They are not something that you will willingly give up until you are darn good and ready. I mean, I don't know about you, but there was a time before I was real, before I was doing a lot of spiritual work where it would be so easy for me to hold a grudge for two years. I mean, it's crazy. And it's, I think it was a combination of how that pain at that time became attached to every other pain that I had in my life, and therefore it was a trigger. So letting go with grace is about recognizing patterns, because when you can begin to see a pattern, then you can begin to love those pieces of you that have reacted in such a strong way. It doesn't matter <clears throat> how successful you are or how well put together you are, how you present yourself. There will always be something that can get under your skin that you just don't see coming. And though those triggers will continue for as long as you are a breathing human being. And it's the way that you choose to let go of all of that emotion that is behind those triggers and behind those reactions that will make all the difference. I mean, have you ever been in a car stuck in traffic on your way to an important appointment and you're, you know, you're checking your watch and then maybe a few colorful words start flying out your mouth because you know that you're late? Well, how might someone who can let go of that gracefully behave? Or what might they say? Oh, one thing might be, okay, well, there's nothing that can be done here. 
how can I make the best use of my time? Or it could be, you know what? Maybe, just maybe, the universe is keeping me out of harm's way. So many different ways that you can take a look at things. <clears throat> and when someone gets under your skin, so talk about letting go with grace. So here's a really good one for you. Everyone has either, you know, uh, someone who's a coworker, perhaps, you know, it's, it's a colleague, it's someone in your civic community, it's someone in your family for that matter. We all have people that tend to get under our skin from time to time, spouses even. And the thing with that, <clears throat> you have history with these people and it is so easy. Oh, thank you so much for the hearts. It is so easy when you have history to be caught to, I mean, to go into reaction mode without even thinking about it, because you remember all the other times that this other person got under your skin. So it makes it a bit more difficult to let go. But what you may not realize is there's always something going on under the surface that you may not know about. So how difficult is it to cut someone a break? If you end up giving them the benefit of the doubt, time after time after time, and it's a repeat pattern, and then maybe it's time to have a conversation. So the more that you tend to react instead of acting, so let's go, let's just re restate that again. <clears throat> the more you tend to react, which would be flying off the handle when somebody gets under your skin, instead of acting when you see a consistent behavior, the acting would be engaging in a conversation that doesn't come from a place of judgment and just, you know, asking if that person's okay. Asking, you know, like, what, what's going on? Did, you know, did I say something that offended you? There are a multitude of ways. And when you're able to develop more compassion, then you are able to just let things go a little bit easier. I'm just checking my notes here because I've got kind of a cold, uh, colder flu fog brain here. So I just want to make sure I don't uh, miss anything. Oh yes. Oh, and this one's really important in terms of letting go. Oh, and I just, I, I want to make sure that I mention there is a great free gift that accompanies this episode. So if you go to lesliekarenhammond.com forward slash nine make the cut. Again, lesliekarenhammond.com forward slash nine, make the cut. There are three secrets you'll find for cutting ties in unhealthy relationships. So that's a big part of letting go. So I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that, but to, <clears throat> to get back to the next thing in regard to letting go with grace. And that is, mm, that's detaching from a specific outcome to something. So what do I mean by that? I right, imagine that you're a business owner and you have invested a lot of time, a lot of money. I mean, we're talking blood, sweat, tears, and emotion here that you have put so much of yourself into <clears throat> a project that of course you are so vested in that it's important to you that it succeed. However, if you have an open-ended definition of what that success means, then you are more likely to receive something wonderful. Just like when, like say for example, you were to have an event and you were looking for a high attendance. So maybe for you, the gauge would be, okay, well, uh, I'm having this event and I need a hundred people there. <clears throat> so perhaps your attachment to outcome may be that you need to have a hundred people there. Well, what happens if only 50 show up? Are you devastated? If you are able to detach from a very specific outcome in this particular case of having a hundred people show up and getting 50, what if you could look at it from the perspective of those 50 people that came were precisely the 50 people that needed to be there. So here's a fun exercise that, um, that I play with many times when it comes to 
really investing a lot of myself into a project and then outcome. So not being attached to a specific outcome, you can have a few different outcomes. So if you, because most of us need to have a, a goal in mind or something specific that we're working toward. So we need to have some gauge that we can measure what the success is. <clears throat> so say for example, that you were having this event and one of your outcomes could be, well, wouldn't it be really cool if, you know, 50 people showed up and wouldn't it be, so that would be like your first one. And then maybe you're out of the, out of the ballpark would be, oh, excuse me. I was really hoping I wasn't going to have to cough during this. <coughs> <coughs> so your next wonderful outcome could be, well, what if all of the people that came were interested in talking to you about doing business with you? That would be pretty awesome, right? And then what if you had this can't make this bleep bleep up? What if you had this outcome that was so far beyond anything that you could possibly imagine? Uh-oh. <coughs> Another cough coming. Sorry, here comes a cough drop. <coughs> you know what they say about technical difficulties? Well, this time it's with the speaker. <coughs> hmm. Theraflu, don't fail me now. <clears throat> okay, so what if you had an outcome that was so grand, so flippin' unbelievable, that maybe one of those 50 people, if 50 showed up, that were sitting in your audience, maybe they wanted you to come speak for their group and in the group that you spoke to for them they had a room filled with 200 people that wanted to do business with you so when you can get really playful with the outcomes and not get attached to any one specific thing it opens the door for a lot of wonderful things to happen all right so now i'm swishing this uh, cough drop around in my mouth but in any case, so <clears throat> when you can open the door for a multitude of different outcomes, and here, now here's the really important piece, and although this is easier said than done, I promise with practice, you will get so much better at it. With practice, you'll be able to not just think it, but truly believe it that whatever happens regardless of the outcome it's going to provide a lesson and a much needed lesson for you to take you to the next phase of what you're working you could learn something that you never saw coming that could be a really critical piece for your business so if you can detach from a specific outcome because you know with every ounce of your being that what will happen is exactly what's supposed to happen, can you imagine how liberating that would be? How freeing <clears throat> that would be? Now, if you want to call this like let go and let God, by all means, you can think about it that way. For me, I tend to live a spiritual life, so I turn it over to Great Spirit, to Source. But there's always an understanding that regardless of what happens, even though it isn't what I might have hoped for, wished for, wanted, as a Kate one, wanted or thought that I needed, regardless, I got what was pertinent for me to see feel experience there are always going to be opportunities to shift the way you take a look at things <clears throat> and now here's another important piece about letting go with grace is if you have a time where you don't let go with grace psst, 
so what? Make an apology if you have to. You are human. You're entitled to not be perfect. I know, it sounds really simple. Can it be that simple? If you fall off the wagon, just get back up again and keep going. Letting go with grace is a practice. It starts in the heart. It's about compassion for self and for others. It is about understanding that whatever you experience <clears throat> is exactly what you were meant to see, to hear, to feel. Everything that you've gone through has prepared you for this moment. This moment today, this moment in five minutes, this moment for next week, however it is that you need to show up. So the sooner <clears throat> you can develop a practice of observing how you show up and then making either a tangible note on a piece of paper or making a mental note, the sooner that you're able to do that, you'll be able to identify patterns and you'll be able to see where you can stretch yourself and become more comfortable letting things go. <clears throat> it's, it can be so easy to want to hold on to something. So easy. So let me just um, share again, in case you missed it before, the, I have a little something for you that will help you cut ties in unhealthy relationships. So if that's of interest to you, you can go to lesliecarenhammond.com forward slash nine, as in the number nine, make the cut. Because I think we all need help in separating from unhealthy relationships. And <clears throat> even if this is someone that you will physically be around, there's still a way that you can cut the unhealthy piece of that tie. So just to, to sum up here, letting go with grace, it's about compassion, having compassion for yourself and for others, <clears throat> being able to see how you show up and how you react, because once you recognize it, then you'll be able to understand the pattern and do a little something about it. The second thing is not being attached to any specific outcome. If you can open your heart, open your spirit, open your mind to whatever experience you are meant to have and not be so, what's a good, a good term, uh, wrapped around the axle to what you're going to get out of it, then just think of how much stress you will be taking off these shoulders. You might find that you have a longer distance between your ear and your shoulder blades because we get stressed out, we tend to go like that. So that would, that'll make, <clears throat> excuse me, <coughs> a significant difference. And understanding that you will ultimately get what you need. So I, I would welcome any comments that you might have if you choose to put anything below either now or after the video is over. But I invite you, I so invite you to practice letting go of things that you've normally held on to in the past. Because if you can let go, you can forgive. If you can forgive, <clears throat> you can move on. And if you can move on, think of the world of possibilities that await you. Holding on to things is the equivalent to an enormous physical burden. It's, it's bigger than the monkey on your back. It would be the gorilla that is on your back. So please consider, please, please consider letting go. Mm. Oh, thank you for the well wishes. Yes, I'm hoping to snap out of this thing pretty quick. So I really hope that you enjoyed today's episode. And, and again, if you want to catch the, the accompaniment that goes with this, three ways to cut ties to unhealthy relationships. Go to LeslieKarenHammond.com. 
com forward slash nine make the cut because everybody wants to have more healthy relationships and if I can be of assistance and providing you a couple things to get you thinking about stuff a little different then by all means so thanks for <clears throat> tolerating my nasally voice and the cough drop on the water so um, I'm grateful that you joined us lots of love and light until next week bye for now